Congratulations to me. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome for your first time joining us. It's gonna be a great time. My own stupidity, my own fault. You might be wondering why I'm saying congratulations to me. Well, it just so happens that I made a mistake. A very big mistake. Well, what is that mistake, Cody? I'm sure you're wondering. Well, it just so happens that when all the issues arose with the leaks that we had here and up here, it just so happened that the fan got kind of jammed and I thought it was jammed on the shroud. Unfortunately, it was not jammed in the shroud and it was actually jammed on the fins right there of the radiator. I didn't think anything of it, but apparently it just caught enough of one of the tubes right there and I sprung a big coolant leak. Now it doesn't really leak that bad when it's just sitting here, but when you throttle it up, it just shoots coolant out. So we went through all that hard work over winter to clean that out and basically get all the corrosion and rust and everything out of that radiator for me to just have a silly rookie mistake and end up ruining it to the point where I'm not even gonna try patching it, it just, it, it needs replaced. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And quite honestly, I wanted a new radiator anyway, even when I was trying to repair this one to get the coolant to flow through it. Now we're just gonna do that. And in saying that, we have a new one right here. Now an OEM one is gonna cost you probably around a little over $500 where this was an aftermarket one, but supposed to be OEM uh, dimensions and all that, <sighs> this was a heck of a lot cheaper. And it's gonna look nice. Just look at this beautiful piece. So nice. And it has the uh, kind of cut in at the bottom. Everything should hopefully match up perfectly with that. It even has the screw holes on the side. We'll find out. The downfall to all this, unfortunately, I need to drain all the coolant back out but it could be worse it's not that bad drain the coolant out we'll take disconnect two hoses take four bolts out pop this one out and we're done the other thing is i'm looking at this in a positive way because not only one i'm getting a new radiator and two it's better to happen in here than out in the field and if it took that little bit to put a punch a hole in it i mean i the fan blade was not caught in there hard at all. Just grazed it a little bit. And for it to punch a hole in that, it was that chintzy and that thin. Again, it was this would happen in the worst possible time, baling hay when the baler's already not working. And then that would have sprung a leak. And then we had to pull it right back in here. So we might as well do it right, throw a new one in there and do it that way. And we did end up getting this tuned up a lot better. We had to mess with the ignition timing with the spark and all that. So this sounds 10 times better. I mean, it sounds very nice. I would fire it up for you guys. However, you're just gonna have to take my word for it for right now because what I need also need to do is this gasket for the push rod cover here or the lifter cover, whatever you wanna say, it leaks oil. So I don't know why. So we're gonna just pop this whole cover off, do a, thing of gasket around, make my own gasket with some uh, adhesive, whatever, I can't even remember what it's called. Create your gasket and we'll put this back on. So I don't wanna run it and have it push more oil back up here 
I want to let this, I need to get this off while there's no oil up here. Everything should have settled back down. Covers off. Now to me, this is the dumbest design ever. So basically these little ridges here are what seals on the gasket. But then when you come to the screw hole, there's nothing there. Absolutely nothing. So these are pushing in. I'm assuming they're just assuming that that's going to sit flat with the screw push pushing against it. I don't know. But this, you can see the indent in the cork gasket over there. It just, I don't know, maybe this cover's bent, warped a little, which is very possible. It actually looks like it is a little bit, so right in here. But either way, we're going to put some Permatex on there and solve that problem fully. So we'll probably pull that gasket off, try and dry it up the best we can, put some Permatex around the, so we can stick the gasket fast. And we also have the coolant draining as we speak. Hopefully I have some gasket maker. I don't know if I do. Here we go, got a brand new pack. I'm kidding. But I don't think this is gonna be enough. Probably not. This is oil resistant, RTV. Yeah, this probably wouldn't be enough to go the whole way around. I don't even know if it's still any good, actually. Probably should just get a new tube. That, that looks nice, I like it. And I'm gonna feel a lot more confident having it be brand new and it's aluminum. So yeah, I'm gonna like that. And it fits really well. I don't know about the screw holes. Actually, yes, they line up perfect. I also think if I read everything correctly, this is a five channel or a five section, whereas the stock OEM ones are only four. So a little bit better there too, I feel like. Just like that. We're back in business as far as the, ra the radiator goes. Everything lined up perfect. The holes lined up perfect for mounting. It was the same threads. Hoses lined up perfect. Everything was great. And I think we even have higher pressure cap as well. And the other thing that I JB welded with was the overflow. That ended up breaking right off when I pulled the old hose off. So again, much better that we're gonna have a new one on there. Only thing that's left to do is get some gasket maker and reattach that. And then we'll be back where we started. Well, this stuff should work. Thought about doing the red, but I don't think it's really gonna get that hot like it would on a head. Much easier to install it this way. The gasket sticks.
Hopefully that works a lot better. There is gasket material or RTV silicone behind the cork gasket and then also on the cover side. So kind of what the package said to do is kind of finger tighten or just, just till it starts to squeeze out, let it set up for an hour and then torque everything or tighten everything. So I'll give it a little while here and then tighten everything up and hopefully, hopefully we don't have any leaks. And we'll wait obviously to try and run it or anything at least for 24 hours. It's been about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna tighten all these. We took a little one step forward, two steps back, kind of. But now, hopefully, we should be right back where we started and we should be able to move forward from here. So, next thing on the agenda is gonna be fill it back up with coolant. Obviously, I mean, hopefully the radiator shouldn't leak because it's brand new. And I would imagine they pressure tested and everything else. We have to run the tube. But then at that point, we should be able to fire it up and hopefully none of the gaskets or anything here that we've done, hopefully none of that leaks anymore. I don't know, we won't know that until we try it, but we're kinda, should be making progress here. So that's gonna conclude today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.